So what am I doing to improve my leadership? A uh, demonstration of that, of course, is coming to a conference like this, of course. What should I be doing to help my team perform, okay? There's the obvious things we have to drive for your business metrics, your goals and objectives, all of that thing. But who on my team needs um, uh, extra help? Who on my team needs to be unleashed? Who on my team can help others grow and develop? These are the kinds of questions that leaders ask themselves. And then finally, and here's the question where we look ourselves in the mirror, what's holding me back? Okay? And we as human beings are really, at least I know I am, are really good at making excuses. So is it my boss? Is it people on my team? Is it a structure? Is it an organization? Is it a system? Is it a process? What's holding me back? And finally, what will I do about it? Moxie is a term that's the guts and gumption. We hear it a lot in, in movies. And I turned it into an acronym which is a sense of mindfulness. Are we being in the moment when we need to be in the moment? Are we situationally aware for ourselves and for our organizations? Are we looking for opportunity? Oh, do we have the courage, the guts, the X factors, the resilience to persevere? Are we innovative? Are we thinking creatively? Are we challenging others to think creatively? And are we engaging? E, engagement. Are we connecting with others? So moxie becomes this con concept of bringing people together. And where purpose is organizationally focused, moxie is more what the leader needs to do to deliver on that purposeful equation. So ask yourself and your organization, what is our organizational mission? What is it that we do? And how does my team, be it purchasing, marketing, sales, logistics, whatever it is, how do we fulfill that mission? Think on that. And then the most important thing is, what's our values? The values are our collective beliefs. What hold us together? Employees are looking to their bosses for inspiration. Really, they're looking for their boss for inspiration. And, and I think you come to an event like this, and, and uh, Martin alluded to it, you become inspired. You're all together in a collective, uh, uh, working toward the same purposeful action. That is inspiring, okay? That is how you create. So what are you, how are you gonna take the inspiration you feel in this room, in these in the last two days, how are you gonna take that back to the workplace? How are you going to inspire your team? And what inspire really, really gets down to is, as we talked earlier about, giving to work meaning, finding enrichment, all of those things. How do you turn that on for people? All right, that's that inspiration. How do I, motivate and actually as you know motivation is intrinsic we don't motivate anyone we enable them to motivate themselves that's part of that driver of inspiration as a leader you need confidence in yourself that's good others have to have confidence in you but here's the really exciting part are you instilling confidence in others so they believe in themselves. And we are at the perfect opportunity for this right now. And it's a shining example. And you'll see it in, in March Madness in the basketball tournament. They will interview the players and dollars to know us, a player will say, coach got us to believe in ourselves. Coach said we could do that. He instilled the confidence through his tutoring through his, tr his training, through all the practices the team went through, but fostered a, s a sense of collaboration so that people felt good about themselves and they felt good about being part of the team. Are you instilling confidence to get others to believe in themselves, to believe that they can overcome adversity, that they can succeed? 
confidence is important and leaders need to radiate that, but also seek ways to affirm confidence in others. Legacy actually begins the first day on the job. How are you contributing to your team? And if you stay with the team, what are you sharing of yourself? Are you a collaborator, a coordinator? How are you building that? And if you think about legacy in the long term, it's the pluses and the minuses. And ideally, a leader's legacy will have more pluses than minuses. But the legacy is what you leave. And the legacy is an outgrowth, certainly, of your purpose. It is what enables you to make that positive difference and to think long term. What am I going to do differently? How am I going to tap into the potential of my people? Who am I overlooking? What other resources do I have? How can I collaborate more effectively? How can I be more creative? How can I think and look over the horizon? Those are the things that form our legacy. Those are the things that lead to purposeful action. Hi, I'm John Baldoni, leadership speaker and executive coach. As a speaker and teacher, I perform in front of large audiences, anywhere from 10 to 1,000 or more. As a coach, I work one-on-one, -on -one, just the executive and me. My leadership work is based upon principles I write about in my columns and my books. Let me explain my approach. As a speaker, my core message is rooted in purpose, how leaders bring others together for common cause. As such, I focus on what leaders need to do to lead others to achieve sustainable results. You know, leaders create conditions so people not only know the purpose of the organization, but live it through their actions. Effective leaders are mindful of themselves and their situations. They identify opportunities for others. They promote innovation and they engage personally with their people. The challenge for leaders is to turn that vision into shared vision. For more information about my speaking and coaching, please visit johnbaldoni.com. There you will find links to my books, columns, and videos. Thank you.